So today I'm going to share with you a story about how we approach engaging our clinicians in integration via, via an integrated care collaborative. Australia's health system faces a number of challenges, but possibly none greater than the ability to ensure every patient routinely receives seamless, efficient and effective care. This is particularly relevant for individuals with complex and long-term conditions, as they and their families regularly interact with multiple healthcare providers. So this is our region, northern New South Wales. It's very beautiful. Um, we have an ageing population, with about 18% of the population being over 65 years, compared to the New South Wales average of 14%. We have a high Aboriginal population, approximately 3.6%, and high levels of disadvantage. We also have New South Wales-Queensland cross-border difficulties, with challenges managing individuals accessing healthcare in both states. So where to begin? Somehow we needed to move our clinicians into a team needed for integrated care. We recognised that care integration could not be imposed by a top-down approach, and therefore, clinician engagement would be fundamental to bringing about a sustaining change. The clinical landscape was complex. There is a mixture of publicly employed staff and private, independent general practices, and this had created some silos. Assumptions and preconceived ideas about what motivated each group. This could be quite judgmental between the two groups. The ability to work closely together had been eroded, and clinicians didn't actually know each other, even if they referred patients often to each other. There were sustainability challenges and money was time limited. So, an expert reference panel was convened to develop aims, measures, change principles and change ideas for an integrated care collaborative. The objective of the integrated care collaborative was to improve health out outcomes and patient experience, as well as preventing avo avoidable hospital admissions for people with complex long-term condi conditions through the improved use of integrated care teams. We recruited clinicians and staff from 15 general practices, including Aboriginal Medical Services, and seven hospitals participated in the collaborative. So we had the support from the fantastic team at the Improvement Foundation, and the collaborative went for a period of nine months and included a series of learning workshops the learning workshops were well attended by hospital and community-based clinicians from the local health district, as well as general practitioners, practice nurses, and other staff from general practice. Consumers were also invited to the workshops, and they shared their experiences of their healthcare journeys with the workshop participants. During the time between each workshop, participants were asked to apply the workshop learnings to identify and test change ideas for making improvement within their organisation, as well as within the wider healthcare community. At each workshop, there were tabletop presentations which allowed clinicians to share their innovations and ideas generated from the collaborative. This enabled participants to share generously and still shamelessly their improvement ideas. The strong presence of senior executive and managers allowed frontline clinicians to present and discuss everyday challenges and possible solutions to providing coordinated care and shared communication. This gave the decision makers greater insight into the everyday issues and ideas for a way forward. So it certainly was not always smooth sailing, as you can imagine. Recruitment of primary care clinicians was done without paying them any incentives. We appealed to their sense of wanting to improve the health system for their patients and make it easier to work in the system. General practice were offered the opportunity to have a named point of contact within the health district chronic disease team and the opportunity to receive admission and discharge notifications via their secure messaging system. They also had the support of a PHN general practice support officer. LHD clinicians were encouraged by their managers to participate. This in itself was a risk because this sort of encouragement doesn't necessarily equal buy-in. Distance made it difficult to get people into a room together, but we knew this would be important if relationships were to develop. There were cultural differences between the teams. Timing of meetings was a challenge, as LHD staff preferred to meet during the daytime, whereas general practice staff could only meet during the evening. Data to track progress was extremely difficult to obtain due to different IT systems across the services. There was no common mechanism for communicating across the health system.
Once we were underway, the voyage itself was one of discovery for all involved. Clinicians came together to share and steal ideas. This was very popular, and once we finally got people into the room, they were really engaged. Integrated care teams formed naturally, and the teams were given license to work out how they would make it work. Clinicians started to communicate, visit each other's services, and form relationships. Although the collaborative was hard work, overall the feedback was positive. Okay, so with the collaborative, um, what we saw as part of the outcomes, there was 200 patients enrolled in the collaborative at the time. They were nominated by about 15 practices. We had, um, the outcomes were that we had 35% increase in the number of GP management plans, 15% increase in advanced care directives, and 266 improvement ideas submitted. So they were done under the Plan Do Study Act cycles. Um, I want to mention LHD uh, for New South Wales Health is our local health district, which is our um, hospital system. So it's bringing together public and private sectors. Um, with the PDSAs that we did, public health have never really um, participated in that um, type of quality improvement. They uh, go for the larger improvement, larger improvement projects. So this was really a big move for us to bring in what is currently um, undertaken in private practice and bring it across into the hospital system. So I just want to share with you some of the examples of these PDSAs that were led by the practice nurses. Um, we had one practice at Ganella Bar actually were getting a little bit frustrated with uh, the information they felt wasn't being used when they would refer a patient to ED. So they wanted to engage with the, uh, services at the local emergency department, see what happens with that information that's sent in, and see if they could sort of, you know, improve that process. So they organised to go and meet with the emergency department. That in itself, that whole scheduling process was a complete challenge with um, trying to get the director of emergency to be in attendance, um, the GP being available and everyone to be able to meet in the one place. Uh, then what was, able to be, what was able to happen was they could see where they, when they were sending the information, how it was actually uploaded into the databases for the emergency department. So while there was a presumption that services just aligned with each other and the same information was needed by both, um, they had a little bit of insight into the fact that uh, while they may send in as much information as they thought relevant, um, busy ED departments don't actually uptake a lot of that information. They were only interested in things like medications, recent uh, visits to specialists, and other tests performed. Uh, they also had a different view of the My Health record. So that was new information to the GP practice. And what they also discovered was that even though there was advanced care directives on the My Health record, that actually didn't transcribe across to the hospital services um, EMR view. So out of that meeting, there was also a lot of discussion about the timeliness discharge summaries as well. Out of that um, meeting, there was the arrangement made for a reciprocal meeting, going back to ED staff actually going back to the GP practices and seeing sort of um, how, what their challenges were. There was also an agreement with the use of information that would come in from the GP services when patients are referred to emergency. And uh, the practice staff then took back the fact that the advanced care directives weren't being um, viewed by the emergency department and undertook a self-management process with patients and families that they educated on the usefulness of the advanced care directives and gave them the document and worked around um, that way that they actually carried it in and identified it to the emergency staff. Uh, and what we found was that that enabled just that simple interchange enabled um, improved relationships so they're able to go forward now and actually um, openly discuss other strategies and other um, challenges that they have between services. Um, another relationship that was developed was between one of the practice nurses and our nurse practitioner from uh, geriatrics from the hospital. There was um, an idea put forward that cognitive um, testing would be conducted under the mini mental state exam, but actually identified on the patient's records quite freely so that that information, when a patient presented to emergency or to a hospital through a planned admission, it would be acknowledged by the um, admitting team 
and um, be used to assess whether there was a deterioration or just have a baseline so that people could actually determine if a delirium was in fact a worsening of their condition. So working collaboratively, it was decided that um, undertaken with the home health assessment for over 75s that the mini mental would be um, undertaken and that information would be clearly identified on the patient's records um, for all staff to see at the practice and hopefully um, transferred across to the hospital services. This would be done by the CDM nurses and the GP. Now, some of the challenges that they had was one, that a GP refused to actually participate in it because he didn't want that information on his patient records. Um, time constraints, reminding staff to continual, continually to do this and um, continue the process. Uh, however, they did find that one GP had it as part of his usual practice. So what the plan is for that team is to continually be able to remind the GPs and CDM nurses to do that. They have put a template into uh, the cognitive assessment now, so it's working as a prompt, and um, looking at other ways to assist patients to discuss advanced care directives with their GP. And they will look through, um, it's facilitated by the nurse practitioner, to find out how useful that information is um, viewed by the hospital, because it's one thing to pass the information through and start up all of these things. If it's not used at the other end, then um, we need to go about it another way. And in the context of steal shamelessly and share generously, uh, we had one practice nurse working in isolation. She uh, really needed some support and also wanted to um, engage with other pra another practice nurse. So she contacted a nearby medical centre to, so she could go and observe and share and steal those ideas. Uh, she wanted to see if she could improve care planning um, at her practice. So made contact, that initial stage of opening up and stepping outside her own doors and walking into another practice. Uh, she was quite transparent about the fact that she did want to steal their ideas and she wanted to sort of um, create a collaborative and um, engage to uh, see that practice in protected time. So what happened was, obviously, uh, they had um, a very good interchange. They were able to share information and share different ways about going about things within the practice. But the key area in the unexpected outcome was uh, it was a very experienced uh, nurse educator that existed in the other practice. So this nurse actually found herself a mentor, and they've continued to develop that relationship so that she can um, facilitate that in her own practice. And I think that is probably a key thing for a lot of nurses, uh, particularly when you're working in isolation, regardless of if you are in a large multidisciplinary team, to have somebody to um, throw ideas off and to develop your skills with is highly essential. So what have we learnt? We've learnt that um, the Integrated Care Collaborative is only a starting point for our area, and further integration projects are currently being rolled out from that. Uh, it enabled us to build clinician interest and um, develop relationships between staff at a local level. The main premise of all of this was to go across sectors and bring together our private practice with our public health staff. Uh, clinicians know what's wrong with the system and they're the best ones placed to develop and test solutions if they're allowed to. And that we were also able to find that a lot of the improvements were done without the need of any new resources. Face-to-face -face engagement is crucial. We've got a lot of IT systems. We have a very large area, and it was a real challenge to bring people together into one room. And while that wasn't the regular um, way of doing things, those key meetings were very um, good for breaking down barriers. The structured PDSAs increased comfort of managers and permitted clinicians to trial innovative ideas. And that, as I said, was a really big um, challenge taking that into the public health system, uh, where we are very, well, I shouldn't say not only us, but it is a very new area uh, to work in, but it did allow people to become creative and do things in very small ways without sort of, you know, bringing down um, the whole structure of the health system by having a few small ideas. Leadership was, the leadership role was one of enablement. It was allowing staff to get in there and um, try these ideas. And that the soft stuff um, is hard to get right, but it was actually some of the most important things. So those relationships and that team building is what is going to enable us to go further with the bigger ideas. If we didn't go down this road um, and really prioritise the relationship building, 
we wouldn't be in a place where we are now to be able to discuss the more challenging um, areas of coordinating care because we all definitely walk in the door with our own agendas. So how have we changed? We've strengthened our organisational partnerships. Um, we've built confidence in working across the sectors, which obviously, as I said, is favouring subsequent work. Uh, we've identified what clinicians thought were important to fix and prioritised our actions. We've improved the way we communicate with each other and our patients, and all of our services have started focusing on what matters most to the patient. Thank you. <laughs>